Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the 30 page Smashbook Challenge. If you don't know what a Smashbook is, it is a cross between a journal and uh, an art journal and a scrapbook uh, with elements of collage and things like that thrown in. It's basically a book where you keep your memories. Uh, I'm very bad at, at doing scrapbooking. Um, I just, I can't, the big pages, I can't seem to wrap my mind around putting photos and all the decorations. I'm really good at art journaling, but I wanted something where I could keep my memories too. I don't, I don't just want, I have five art journals um, with different themes. Uh, and I wanted something different. And a smash book is really good because when I was little, I used to keep little mementos like fortune cookie fortunes and um, pictures of my friends and me and ticket stubs um, when I was a teenager, concert uh, ticket stubs, uh, things like that. And or I'd find a, a candy wrapper that I liked or I'd see a picture in a magazine that I really liked and I want to keep it so I put it I tape it to my mirror in my bedroom and pretty soon I couldn't see anything else but all the pictures I had taped up so I had to take them all down but I, I really miss keeping those kind of memories close so if we put them in a smash book then we can keep them and look at them whenever we like and it's also something to pass down to your children to say this day this song was playing, this day you did this. Um, it, it's really very interesting the way a smash book works. Um, I, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, this will be the first one that I've made. I made lots of art journals, uh, lots of regular journals as well. And I think that putting all of your memories into one place that doesn't have to be set up like a scrapbook where you can add other things as well. Um, in a smash book you can do like an art journal and paint um, backgrounds, you can glue papers, you can glue all kinds of just mostly flat elements, you can put pockets in it. So this challenge is going to be for 30 pages, not 30 days. And the reason I say this is because I have four kids, three dogs, um, two cats, and a bunch of fish. And they keep me pretty busy. So I'm not able to create every single day. I want to, but sometimes I just don't have the time. It's just not possible. So if you're like me and you're in that situation too, then I want this challenge to be for you. I don't want you to give up or, or get, um, you know, where you think you can't do it because you don't have 30 days in a row to do it. So it's not 30 days, it's 30 pages. Now I'm going to try my hardest to do the 30 pages every single day. Like right now it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I know all the kids are asleep so I have time to do it now. Which is why I'm in my night clothes. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, so it, even if I have to stay up to 2 o'clock I'm going to really try to get my videos in so that way you can see what I'm doing. And this video is the introduction and I'm going to post this. And then when I'm done with this video, you'll have another video, um, probably within a couple hours, you'll have another video posted on my blog uh, so that you can see the first page. The first page we're going to do of our smash book is going to be an about me page. And I think it's a good place for anyone to start. Not, a, not an about me page, but a, um, this book belongs to page, sorry. This book belongs to page. Uh, and then the second page would be like an about me page. So the first page on the cover, when you're looking at the book on the cover, it would be this book belongs to, and then we're going to, I'm going to have fun with that. I'm going to show you how to do it. And when I say 30 pages, I don't mean a whole two pages. Although sometimes I plan on doing two pages to make it cohesive, but one page is one side of the page. That'll make it a lot easier if you only have 10 or 20 minutes to do this a day. So uh, this is a challenge I think everyone can join in, everyone will be able to do. 
very limited supplies, um, not expensive supplies at all, uh, easy to find. Uh, most of my supplies are either found objects or stuff that I buy on Walmart. Um, but I'll go over the supplies in a, uh, in a minute. And um, what else? Um, you can tell I don't do that many videos. <laughs> okay, so let's let me get started um, on the supplies, and I'll go through anything else I can think of while I'm doing while I'm showing you the supplies that we're going to be using. So um, just give me a minute, and well, actually, I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, I'm back and welcome to my very messy craft table. This is um, the book I'm going to be using. This will be the first main supply you'll be using. It's This book was going to the, headed for the trash, the recycle, well not recycle bin, actually it was headed for the landfill. Um, so because I found it, uh, I saved it, um, this is a good book to use. You can use any kind of um, journals. Um, let's see, like I have one of these cheapo, cheapy dollar journals from Walmart, <laughs> um, just with the regular pages. Now with these, the paper is thinner, so it does have kind of a crinkly effect, like a warping effect. But this book I really like, and this is just a soft cover, um, or a card, card stock cover, but it, the pages are pretty thick. Um, and they're a little bit glossy, and that's going to make it stronger and last longer. So that's what you need. You can use any kind of journal. You can use an art journal. Oh, sorry about shaking that. You can use an art journal. Um, you can use any book you can find that, uh, preferably one you're not going to read or that no one's going to read again. And because this was in such bad shape, they, they were going to throw it out. I'm sorry about my dogs. They're outside. Uh, they bark anytime anything moves or makes a noise. <laughs> the wind blows and they start barking. Okay, so that's that. We're going to need papers. And I have sets of papers here that I'm going to show you. You can use you can use scrapbooking papers, which I have um, some that I've picked out. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of these, but I wanted to show you a variety. Um, these are just cute papers. You can use... Uh, card stock. You can use painted papers. These are from my um, jelly prints. I'm not very good at jelly printing. Uh, I really envy, I'm really jealous of those people that can do really good jelly prints because this is was a scrap paper, but um, like this was a jelly print. I just, I'm not very good at it. Uh, they don't turn out like I want them to. Um, like, I just, I, gi I gave up on jelly printing. Might try it again if I have maybe some better tutorials on it, but, um, so that's the papers that you can use. You can also use any kind of book pages, found papers, um, magazine pages, which I thought I had a magazine, but I guess I don't. Um, magazine pages, uh, where you can paint over them. Uh, anything that you put on your book makes the pages stronger. Uh, so let's see, got stamps uh, and a stamp pad. You'll need a stamp pad too. Um, these were on sale, I think, at um, were they, was it Michaels maybe or AC Moore? I think it was Michaels. Maybe AC Moore. I don't know. But these are pretty cute, so I wanted to show you those. And then also, I have handmade stamps. Um, which I'll be putting a tutorial up on this blog. I had one on my other blog, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put the tutorial up on this blog so I have them all in the same place. But these are just cardboard and foam stamps, that uh, kid craft foam. Um, stencils, and I only have one stencil to show you right now because I lost my other stencils. We've been organizing the craft room and I've been trying to look for my um, all my stuff and I just can't find anything. And so this was just a piece of cardstock that I drew pic a picture on and cut it out. And that works as a stencil. But you can use um, store-bought stencils as well. Now uh, I have a brayer. And this is a smaller brayer. This is about two inches, I'd say. I also have a bigger brayer. 
but I don't like it as much. I don't. I feel like I don't have as much control with the bigger brayers, so I use the smaller one. Um, any kind of foul mark making tools. Uh, I have, um, you know, feathers. Um, these little things that you get in the paint section or the art section. Um, this is a thing from a medical tape. This was a little box I bought, and I and I lost the top, so I just started using it as a as a stamp or uh, mark making tool type thing. These are just one of the cheapy foam brushes. This I just got. Um, I haven't tried it yet, um, but I've seen a lot of people using them. This I got at Walmart. I think it was like a dollar or two or something. Um, it was on clearance, so I just picked it up. I'm like, well, can't beat that, right? <laughs> um, you're gonna need. Um, sponges if you're using stencils and this is a makeup sponge and I have different sponges but I mostly use my makeup sponges uh, we have paint brushes and these are just these are not anything expensive and you can see I don't take care very good care of them because they're really not expensive I mean they come in a huge pack and every once in a while I'll go for a really expensive paintbrush if I have something that I have to do with detailed detailed painting and it has like a super thin tip and they're like three dollars but so that's not not that bad um you're gonna need scissors and things to cut up your paper with if you want to rip your papers that's fine or scissors is fine um sharpie markers work really well uh so i have a sharpie i'm probably not going to use green i just grabbed one um this is a pencil and it's a very, very thick pencil. It's very, very dark and smooth. And this is a really good drawing pencil. Um, charcoal pencils you can use. This is a white um, General's all surface pencil. And I have a black one too, but I can't find it. <laughs> um, this is my go-to pen. This is a, a Signo, a Uniball Signo Micro 307. See if I can. Well, you probably won't be able to see it because it's so dark. But sorry, it's the problem with doing it three, two o'clock in the morning. Um, but this is it has a really super fine point to it, and it just writes really, really nice, and it writes over almost anything. I mean, it's just really smooth. And this is my absolute all-time favorite pen. I'll go to the store and buy a pack of five of these and just use them and use them and use them until they run out. Another mark making tool I didn't show you. This I think I got at the dollar store. Um, and it's the stuff you put under when you're drying your um, dishes and stuff. Or on your cabinets so you can put your cups on top of it. And I just use this as like a stencil type thing. Um, another thing, and I don't have it down here because I have it up here. So I was using it. This is a must, really. Um, I know it's... It's one of the things. It's one of the things that I use a lot of, and this is a Krylon workable fixative. Basically, this is a spray where if you use anything like gel pens, these are gel pens. If you use these and spray this over it, they won't run and they won't rip, smear off. And also, if you use any kind of water-based markers, let me show you that. If you use any kind of water-based markers. Um, they'll uh, they'll run and then you don't have as smooth of a surface like you want it but with this they won't run and you don't you have to use a lot I've had this can for almost a year now and I and it's it's still almost full um, so let's see what else you need uh, acrylic paints if you're going to be painting anything now you can paint directly on your pages and I use just cheap craft paints. I am on a very, very limited budget, so for me to get something um, expensive is a splurge, and it's something that I don't necessarily need, so I probably will buy the cheaper version of it. <laughs> so um, that's just how I work, though, and that's how I've always worked. Um, and I'll probably, you know, I'll never be one of those people who goes out and spends five dollars on one tube of paint. It's just that's not me. That's not how I work. That's not my style. So. Um, with that said, um, the, you can use, like I said, the, the, you can glue these papers onto it, onto your pages, or you can work directly onto your page, like instead of gluing it, I would just be 
you know, just painting it directly on here. And I'm, I'll, I'll show you all the ways like I can think of throughout this 30 page challenge so that you can get an idea and you can get you can learn some new techniques and things so that is it for this video uh, I'm going to be back very soon because um, I want to get started on the first page the um, the uh, belongs to page so I will see you uh, in a couple hours